we have Bob down here putting the walleye fry in. We're trying to kind of temper them to get the temperature somewhat the same as the temperature in the pond. We're not exactly sure if we're going to get this correct, but we do have advanced fry swimming out of the box, out of the packages. Out, I'm doing a video, Bob. Out of the packages, out into the pond. So we think that's a good thing. I'm going to get down here shock. a little closer. We're trying to make it so that they don't suffer any shock and get the bends or whatever. That's what I'm concerned about because this pressurized thing here. Yeah. It just seems like they say it's, just, it's oxygen, so they aren't going to get the bends because this is nitrogen. But right. Just that. So you see here pressure. we have five plastic jugs. Starting over there, coming back around to here, and that's the last one. And they're actually swimming away. We can't capture that. They're pretty tiny. I'd kind of have to almost be in the water. <laughs> and this is the rest of the pond here at Towpath Lane in Ferrisburg, Vermont. Lake Champlain Walleye Association 2012 Advanced Fry Release. Bob went up and got these from the Fish and Wildlife about three o'clock. Took possession of them. Brought them down here in that uh, blue Ford pickup. I guess they made the trip all right. I don't know as I'd like to ride down the Ford, but they made it. I believe Bob's coming here with a uh, sample of, that's a sample of the pond water, Bob? That was a sample of pond water. Sample of the pond water. And all those little things Organisms. swimming around there is what they're going to be feeding on. And yeah. we feed the pond alfalfa meal and inactive yeast to grow these little bugs. And that's where we get the feed for the advanced fry. And the state of Vermont gives us a call, or gives Bob a call and tells him when to get these out of here because they get to where they uh, half, they cannibalize each other. <laughs> and you end up with one big walleye instead of a lot of little walleyes. So that's when we call for a bunch of help. And uh, we let this pond water down. And we have a catch basin on the other end that you can't see from here. It's down over there in the in the woods. Did you get any? We got some. Some fish right here in this bottle that Bob captured coming out and going out into the pond. All of the fish that I've seen at least coming out of these plastic jugs have swam right away rather aggressively so I don't believe that we we have any they're not going to suffer any ill effects, I guess. No high mortality rates right now, that's for sure. And as we said, there's plenty for them to eat in here. Uh, the yeast and alfalfa meal is applied to the water. And the reaction of that causes organisms for them to eat. There's a dead soldier there. That's empty with no fish left in it. And that's a good thing. Bob's trying not to fall in the pond. I'd like to see him go swimming. I don't know about you. You look about save me, right, Ed? Gonna check out this last, this other one, the farthest one over. See what those little guys are doing. That out there is the aeration system that uh, Bob devised here to give these fish some oxygen that they need. Otherwise, this fairly this fairly stagnant water here.
There, that one's empty of fish. They're not very big. I wish I could give you some sort of an idea what size they are, but... Uh, quarter inch. Right? Quarter inch, Maybe Bob? About a quarter inch, I'd say. About a quarter inch, and that's advanced fry stage. And when we take them out, they're about an inch and a half to two inches, I believe. And like I said, we can't let them get much larger than that. That's the building that we keep the stock in. Uh, our pump for filling this pond goes in there. And a lot of other stuff that uh, the feed is all in there and the plankton net and uh, the stuff for taking the water samples here at the pond is all kept here at Bob's house. He's gracious enough to donate his land here and a lot of his time. This is the first pond the Wall Association built. <laughs> This was the very first pond ever yep. dug by the Walleye Association. What happened to all the fill, Bob? Where'd all that go? It's uh, spread around the... Lost it on the land? Yeah. <laughs> Those are done. That one's in the midst of being done. And I think Bob's gone over here. He's going to release some a little farther toward the center of the pond here. So that we could get a fairly decent distribution of them. How many years you been doing this, Bob? Yeah, I bought it down here '84, and I think we put the pond in like '86. And the Walleye Association started in '84, so. Yeah, first, first pond we used Chuck Larson's pond right over. Right, so 1986 this got dug and used, either in 86 or 87 was the first year that this got fish. And we've had success and we've had failures. Last year we released what we thought was a state weighs them and they told us it was around 38,000 fingerlings. And they hope about 65% of them make it to adult walleyes. And we're starting to see some of those four and five year old fish here in the Otter Creek. We started catching short walleyes, anything from uh, 18 inches and under. We started catching some of them five or six years ago. Some as short as five, six inches, seven, eight inches. And uh, every year we've seen that size grow to where we think we got a fairly decent fishery here now. We're told by the state of Vermont that they don't uh, spawn in the Otter Creek, that they only come up here to eat. That's what I heard, that nobody ever caught a fish with spawn in this creek back when they fished year-round. Right. Fish limit. And Chet McKenzie, the biologist, told us that uh, it's like going to the dinner table. That's the only reason they come here is because they're hungry. The makeup of this creek isn't conducive to them spawning. So they go do that somewhere else. Well, who knows, maybe... These that we put in here will change their habits. That's what we're hoping, is we can get them to start spawning here. They like a composition of stony bottom and, and whatnot to do their spawning. They do it in the Winooski, the Pulteney River, the Massisquoi, and I believe the Lamoille. Why they don't like the otter? Don't know. We've been... Uh, video in here for a little while. These are probably came from Winooski River fish. That's last, right. Last year we had Pulteney. Next year will be the Missiscoi. So they pulled these uh, 25 pair, right Bob, out of the Winooski? Um, since the VHS, I think that's what they would try to do, yeah. Not 25 so pair, and then they, uh, they strip the eggs and fertilize them put them in incubation and we get them in this stage right here and like Bob just said last year we got Pulteney River fish they, they got some pears out of there and I think